Creepy Cutie Crafty. Hello and welcome back to Creepy Cutie Crafty. You might be able to tell there's a something slightly amiss here because we started the channel just after the lockdown started. We had plenty of time to work on editing and making videos and all sorts of things at home but then Squinks went back to school and of course that means now she's got more of a social life and also she's got more homework so I've decided to continue the channel without her for the moment but she may pop in from time to time to give her opinions and to also help out with some special projects but we shall see what the future shall hold anyway welcome back to Creepy Cutie Crafty we were a mother and daughter crafting team but now it seems to be just me so hi I'm mum today we are coming back with a bang I'm going to be creating a little scene using these pieces of wood and black lace and some black paper and some all sorts of other things to create a little sort of like, like a diorama. I'm going to be creating the study for the death of rats. Now that might sound a little bit creepy. It possibly would be except for the fact that this comes from a Terry Pratchett book. Terry Pratchett wrote a long series of novels about an alternative universe called the Discworld where all sorts of magical things are reality and one of the things that's in that universe is the anthropomorphic personification of death. He's not a bad guy he's quite friendly but he's also very very good at his job until one day he decides to have a holiday I mean who wouldn't unfortunately there's lots of other things that still need to happen even in his absence so lots of other sort of mini deaths start to appear and one of those mini deaths is a little chap we know as the death of rats who's also known as the grim squeaker now death himself has had several pieces of artwork created about his study and about his life but I thought what about the death of rats because he's just as important and he needs somewhere for some downtime and to organize all of his assignments let's put it that way shall we so I decided to try and have a go at making a study for the death of rats I'm going to be mostly making it out of this stuff which is very very thin bassa wood from my local craft shop it's very easy to cut but it is as I say very very flimsy so I'm going to be using quite a few of these larger struts to give it a bit more support and we shall see how that goes unfortunately I do have to do the usual thing of if you want to keep seeing my videos please like comment and subscribe and tell me about any future projects you would like me to have a go at. Squinks may well be coming back for some videos in the future but we'll see how that goes. Anyway let's get to it. Okay so we're returning again. Sorry about the creaking in the background that's my chair. It's fairly old and really needs replacing but we've got these basil wood sheets here. Like I say they are quite flimsy so I'm going to try and make them a little bit stronger. So I'm going to be using some struts just to reinforce these. I'm also going to be cutting out a door for one of these but of course this is the death of rats so it's going to be more like a mouse hole. I'm going to be using the glue gun to glue these on but I'm going to be using this very sharp pointy thing so not for kids. If you're going to do something like this please make sure you have adult supervision. I'm not going to do any measuring for this. I'm going to try and play it by eye, make it a bit rough and ready. This is after all the death of rats. I want it to be sort of roughly made and give that impression of it being made by tiny teeth. So let's get on with it. First things first I'm just going to roughly mark out on my first piece of wood where the mouse hole is going to go. So I'm just going to make a mouse hole type shape. Like I say, I'm not going to be too precious about this. This is kind of tooth made. I like the idea of a, a mouse or a rat gnawing through the wood. Obviously when you're cutting, always cut away from your hands. I'm using this very handy self-healing cutting mat. Go. I'm being super careful with this one because I don't want to split the wood. One expertly created mouse hole. Now as I've got the label on this side I'm going to glue the struts onto this side as well. This is my battery powered glue gun. Whilst that's heating up I've also got some thick lolly sticks or popsicle sticks and I'm going to use these as floorboards so I'm going to trim off the ends. These will also add some reinforcement to the base of the diorama. <laughs> If you pull the cut edge towards yourself, you're less likely to get splinters along the edge. I'm going to do the supports. There we go. I'm going to put that on the back so I can just get on with doing the popsicle sticks. We've got the baseboard just here and I've got all these popsicle sticks which I've cut the ends off to make it nice and square. And I'm going to lay these across in this direction. I've given myself a little bit of a leeway here where the walls are going to be stuck down. As you can see with the baseboard there is a little bit of a warp there so laying the sticks this way will give it a little bit more support. I'm going to attach the sticks with my old favourite Mod Podge. 
so it's nice and solid. Once I've glued them down, I'm going to put a heavy object on top so it can flatten out the finished floor. So let's get going. <laughs> The thing about Mod Podge is it is water based so it will make the board warp even further so I need to be a little bit careful about that. And I'm going to put the Mod Podge on top. And then I'm just going to go back through and mark where the boards will go. Just slide it in. Already starting to look flatter, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm going to go and put these on the side with a heavy book on top. Hopefully it'll be nice and flat and solid for the rest of the build. I've added a couple of more struts in here to make this piece a little bit stronger. I also think it looks more like the studs in a wall, lending to the idea that the Death of Rats has made his study in the cavities of Death's home. I'm going to move this on the back, so that's out of the way, and then I'm going to return to the door. Now, I cut this out to make the hole here. What I'm going to do is just just use a little bit of Mod Podge and I'm going to attach some struts like this. It's going to look a bit rough and ready but I'm going to leave it open and see how that works out. I'm going to cut some of these down to size first. I like the idea that maybe he's gnawed this out of a piece of wood to fit into his little home. I'm not going to attach the door to the wall until I attach the wall to the floor because I don't know quite how the floor and the wall are going to fit together yet. Just going to stick that down and I'm going to use one of these narrower popsicle sticks just to lay across them like a crossboard. On to the next thing, which I believe is going to be bookcases. So, again, with these little popsicle sticks, I'm just going to make sure that they're about the same height as the wood here and use that to mark the rest. Probably going to need to change the blade on this one so you can see that the end has chipped off. It sounds really strange, but when it starts getting dull, it's best to replace it for safety reasons because if it's broken like that, it's more likely to slip and you're more likely to catch your hand. Fresh blade, we need to, safer than having a dull blade. Let's cut some shelves to size. The next thing I'm going to do is start to put these together. Let's see if the glue gun is going to work for me now. Okay, I've decided that rather than using the glue gun, I'm going to attach the pieces of the bookcases together using my old favourite epoxy sculpt. Now, this is a two-part compound. Mix the pieces together in equal portions. Whilst you mix them together, you wear latex gloves and then you can sculpt and smooth out with water if you want to. It sets after about an hour and then you can paint it and do all sorts of other lovely things with it. So you can see, just that small piece there will be more than enough and then get the other the part. Let's start mixing these together. It's still not quite mixed, you've got that marbling on the surface, you want to make sure it's evenly coloured all through. There we go, you can see that's uniforming colour. Perfect. I'm going to keep my gloves on just so I can work a bit faster and let's start putting this together. Squish things into place. You can see that's all starting to come together. There we go, and you can see how that would work. So I'm going to put that one over here. Right then, so I'm going to do some small additional pieces. I'm going to make a little Omega symbol, as in Alpha and Omega, death is the end of all things. Very deep there for a second. Yeah, I can feel this is starting to get stiffer now, so I need to move as quickly as possible. Put that on the side to set. I've got some of these little pearls and beads. What I'm going to use those for is to make some teeny tiny life timers. I'm also going to make a slice of cheese or two because rats are very fond of cheese. Finally, make some life timers. It's kind of like egg timers. I'm going to put a picture of one up on the screen. Egg ball, squish it flat. sort of looks like an egg timer. I'm going to make an egg timer as well. I'm going to 
and do some more of these off screen. Okay, so you can see I've made several little lifetime things and I'm going to put them over on the side to set and then I'm going to make some books. I've got all these little pieces of wood from previous bits and pieces I've been making. So what I'm going to do is cut them down to size and then I'm going to wrap some of them in this brown parcel paper. I'm also going to use some other bits of paper as well. You might have seen in the start that I had these little books of pattern paper so I'm just going to get some random pieces to make book covers. So back to the cutting again. Yay! Okay so I've made quite a few of these little booky type things. I think they're quite effective. If I was to do like a proper book nook or something like that I think I would try to do paper inserts rather than the wood insert that you can see there. But as I'm going to be gluing them onto the shelves I'm not worried too much. The other thing I'm going to add is a few little scrolls. I'm also thinking that on the desk there should be some papers but I was thinking of using something like this make it look more like a map. For the scrolls what I'm going to do is get some of the paper. I'm going Going to just screw it up like so, then undo it. I'm going to make three little scrolls just loosely, roll it around like this, and then I'm going to use a piece of ribbon to tie it together. And you've got yourself a nice little scroll. That's ready to go. I will do the same with the brown paper and with these other pieces of paper and have plenty of things to fill the shelves with. Some of these I'm just tearing the edge up to make them look old and then just tying them up. You could do this with ordinary paper. I've seen some people aging them by using tea or coffee to stain them. I've just gone for brown and coloured paper just because that suits the scene I'm setting here. And there we have it. Lots and lots of little tiny scrolls and little tiny books all ready to go on the shelves onto the next bit. Okay, so we're on to the next part. I've got this wall and the door as well as the floor. I'm going to trim these down ready for paint. So that's sorted. I've got the door and I've got the wall with the door in it. What I'm going to do is take a mix of greyish black paint and a bit of Mod Podge. Mix those all in together. The colour is called Payne's Grey, so it's not quite black. I want there to be some elements of colour there so I can get some depth. For the door, I want there to be a bit more grain showing. I could use my standing knife, which could be effective just scraping across. But I've also got some of these. These are needle files, and I'm just going to scrape it like that. Finally, we have this one. You can see it's kind of higgledy piggledy. That's exactly what we want. And I'm going to scratch into this one. going to leave this overnight and see how it looks in the morning. These have all had time to get dry. I'm going to be adding some more details but first of all I'm going to put the walls and the floor together. I've got it's another new glue gun because the glue gun tie all fell apart on me. So on to the next one and adding glue on it now. I'm not going to add the door until after I've done the paper and I'm also going to add some paint to the base here but I am going to add some more details onto the surface using both a wash and some dry brushing to bring up the texture. I've got various little books of paper here. I've gone through and found all the nice dark pieces. I've got a little bit of purple, I've got black, black and white, some very pretty decorative styles you can see. First things first, let's get some of these pieces of paper ready. I'm not going to have it with the cut edge. I'm going to tear it up and use it as like pieces of scrap that death of rats has found. I'm going to start with the paler colours and then go over them with the darker ones so I'll just get started. I put the darkest colour on last. kind of like the way this works because the bigger pieces of lighter colour are sort of poking through the darker layers above. And I've got this last piece which I'm going to poke into the corner. To make that easier I just fold it and then that's going to make it easier to fit into the corner. Before I go on to the next part, just get another layer of Mod Podge and just slap it all over the top. Make sure that everything's nice and firmly stuck down. I'm going to put that on the back to dry and get on with some washes and some dry brushing for the wash. Just got 
quite a big amount of water there and I'm tossing up between having pure black or having pearl black. I think I might go for a little tiny bit of pearl on plain black. I only need a teeny tiny bit. It is very, very liquidy, but all that's going to do is get into the surface texture. So I'm going to start with the door. I'm going to use a large, clean brush, and I also need tissue paper or kitchen roll just to dab off the excess. In this instance, I'm not going to wipe it off because I want it to have that streaky feel to it. I'm going to go and leave that to dry. Okay, so now we come to making the little desk. We've got very small pieces of wood. We've got some of these. These are skewers that you use to make kebabs and things. And I'm going to use these to make the chair. With these skewers, I've made a little pencil mark. Then I just get my sanding knife and just roll it. So it being cut evenly on both sides. And then it will break. There we go. And by doing it on the round like that, you avoid getting too many of these little splinters at the end. Okay, so I've got three of these little sticks for each of the legs. Out of these, we're going to make the edges. See, I'm just joining two together, tiny beads of glue, and then a couple more beads on this side. There we go, join those three together to make a little desk leg. So that's four legs done. I get my long edges here. Let's see if I can get them to look sort of even. Oh, that's not bad actually. Okay, I've got a shorter edge. I'm going to put the glove on here this time. And then we can come to the top of the desk. I'll put that like that. That looks about right. a nice little solid desk and I'm going to trim down this edge. It's very basic but it'll do the trick for now. I've also got this. I'm not going to turn that into a chair because it's going to be too high. I'm going to turn that into a side table. Before I can do anything with it I'm going to rough it up with a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to use these bottle caps. Oops, that's starting to come apart. So I'm going to get something to put on top of it. Chair legs. How far do you want him to be sitting? The legs need to be about that tall. I'm going to do two legs this size and then two longer sticks for the back of the chair. And between the legs, I think I'm going to use one of these to create the back. So we've got four chair legs. This one's a bit short, but I can add some epoxy sculpt feet just to make it look a bit more decorative. And once that's cut off at the back, you can see that made quite a nice high back chair. There we go, one chair. What I'll do is I'll add some epoxy sculpt to these guys in a bit and finish off the painting and put everything together. And I'm just cutting down this little piece that goes on there to make a top. Okay, so we're back again, and I've got my two pieces of Mod Podge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is work on this chair. I'm going to turn this into a crisscrossy, cushiony type thing. on its back just so it can get dry without any of the epoxy sculpt touching the table and I'm going to do some feet for these legs I'm going to have another piece of cheese I'm going to make it like a sort of lump of cheese that's half eaten it's going to sit in one of these there we go and put that on the side to set. And finally, I'm going to make a little inkwell. And whilst those are all setting, I'm going to do some dry brushing. We've got all of our items here, ready to do some dry brushing. In. I've also got this little photo frame. It's got a fitting on the back that I don't really need, so I'm gonna take that off. 
I'm going to keep the little plastic film that's on the cover. I have an idea of what I was going to do. Death, the character of Death, had a picture of his daughter Isabel, but I wasn't quite sure how to do an equivalent for that for the death of rats. So I thought, just something simple, like a couple of framed little flowers like that. So I'm going to paint this black, and whilst that's getting dry, I'll do the dry brushing on this. And that'll do for now. Dry brushing. I was thinking, did I want to make it look more like wood? So do I use brown for the dry brushing or do I add something else? And I've decided to go with silver because I wanted to make it feel ethereal, kind of magical. I'm just going to use a blank postcard. For dry brushing, what you need to do is put the paint onto the brush and then you need to dry the brush. Things, that's what it's literally called. And then very lightly brush it against the surface. So I'm going to take some of the silver and just flick it across the surface like this just to bring out that wood grain type of feel to it it doesn't look like much at the moment but you've got to let the paint dry so you can see it's kind of got a silvery black finish to it which i think works quite well so i'll put that on the side to dry and just do some on the bookshelves here and finally we have the floor What I need to do now is wait for everything to get dry and start putting the room together. And we're on to the last little bit of painting. I'm going to make the table pure black and then bring out the grain in silver again. I'm also obviously going to be painting the cheese, so I've got some yellows and greens for that. And I'm not entirely sure about the life timers. Some of these haven't worked out very well. These ones, they look quite blobby, but I might return to this at some point in the future and update the room anyway. I have cheese and lifetimers and I'm going to put them on this another piece of postcard. Now the lifetimers. And on to the next part of the project. Unfortunately, my phone decided to not record anything. What I've done is I've added the door onto the doorway with a little stick that I've cleaned up there, and I've added in three of the bookshelves. And I've started to add the scrolls and the books into the bookshelves. I'm making little stacks of items and then seeing where they're going to fit into the shelves. The next thing to do is my little frame. So what I'm going to do is get my little piece of acetate that came with it. I'm going to put that over there, draw around so I can trim it down. That looks quite nice. I think next time I will try and do like a white haired rat or something like that. Or maybe a picture of Susan who is of course Death's granddaughter. I'm going to put these ones on the side and then put the final thing all together. Okay, so we've gone back to the last few bits of this one. I'm just going to return to my little pot of black wash. Just going to dab it through a little bit. And there we go. We've got the Omega symbol which is going to go above the door. And then we've got some of the life timers and one of the pieces of cheese to go on the bookshelf. Me. I've got some of these random pieces of paper left over from the books that I'm just going to scatter on the desk. I do also have some black lace that I want to have hanging off the desk. Gather it up at the corner. And I'm just going to tear these higgledy piggledy again. Scrumple them up. It's randomly laying on the table. And 
we've got this little table to put on there. And then finally the pen. And do the final wash. It is finished. Okay, so we are done. I'm quite pleased with how this has turned out. There have been quite a few areas where I've had to learn as I go along, but I'm really pleased with how the finished thing has turned out. I have learned quite a bit from doing this. I think I would like to do a diorama that's a lot more detailed and a lot more cautiously constructed. So I'd like to do the books using paper sheets rather than wooden blocks. I would like to do a bit more modelling with the cheese and with the life timers, but I think overall it's worked quite well. I'm really pleased with how the dry brushing on the door and on the floor has worked out really quite pleased with the chair but obviously you can tell there is one small thing that is missing and that is the death of rats himself i am intending to have a whole separate video where i have a go at making him as a little fear quite pleased with that um let me know what you think down in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this video please make sure that you like comment and subscribe all those little things help a small business like me to get my footing let me know what other ideas you would like me to do in the future squinks might come back for some videos other than that it's all done for today thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video or rather i'll see you in the next video and bye bye